See you all. Nice to see you. Oh, thank you very much. Very kind. <laughs> very liturgical sort of greeting. And also with you. Um, it's Palm Sunday today. Yeah. So we're celebrating that uh, time with Jesus coming into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Absolutely incredible when you think about it. The humility of God and uh, coming in, people waving their palm branches and celebrating. There was all sorts of things ahead of him. But this was a day uh, when he was recognized as the king. And we're going to, rather than just going through the, you know, Christmas and Easter, we have our readings, don't we? And it's good to have those readings and think about them and meditate on them. But also sometimes in the familiarity, you can lose um, an understanding of what was going on. And so this morning, we've got a short video uh, that's been produced by some people called the Skit Guys. If you ever want to uh, get some good resources, look at the Skit Guys website. And uh, they have produced this intro to Palm Sunday. And we're going to watch that. And then the team are going to lead us in worship. The Bible says that as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, he sent two of them to get a donkey and her colt. This fulfilled the prophecy in Zechariah. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus mounted the donkey and rode into Jerusalem. Many laid their cloaks on the road before him and brought palm branches to wave and celebrate. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. But not all who were there understood him. Some called him only a prophet, believing him wise, but denying his divinity. Some raged and cheered for a revolution, hoping he would liberate them from their oppressors. To others, he was nothing more than an interruption. Even as children ran to him and shouted for joy, his enemies wove through the crowd, watching, seething, plotting. The range of reactions was great and wide. Celebration, worship, revolutions, deception, cynicism, condemnation, boredom, disinterest. But every single person had to confront one thing, who he was. Behold, your king is coming to you.
Lord, we're grateful for you as you come yeah. to us. Fill this place, we pray. Fill our hearts with your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for your word. Behold, your king comes to you. And I thank you, God. That's our experience, that you come. You come in power. You come in majesty. You come in ordinariness. You come in humility. You come in lives and you transform, Lord God, through the power of all that you have achieved. We thank you for the gospel this morning. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your obedience. We thank you, God, for everything that you are as you come to us, that we don't have to chase after you, that we don't have to pursue you with our prayers, with our rituals, with our, with our efforts, with our sacrifices, but in it all, you come to us. You come to us, and you come to us this morning. I pray for each and every one of us here this morning, Lord God, that would be our experience, that whether we expect it or whether we don't, that you would come to us, come to us in power, come to our, uh, in our needs, come to us in the middle of our storm, come to us in the middle of our uncertainty and our confusion, come to us, Lord God, lift and be the lifter of our heads this morning, we pray. Thank you for your presence amongst us. Thank you for your power at work in us. And thank you for the, for the manifestation of your glory that we see this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please do take your seats. Great. That was the words just coming over and over again. Behold, your king is coming to you. Your king is coming to you. Like I said, like as, as I was praying there, we don't have to pursue him with all of our efforts of searching for him. There's a song that we sing in Zambia saying, you know, I search you, search you here, there. I turn around you here, there. And the, like, wherever we go, we look for him. But in actual fact, he comes to us in power. And he's come to us this morning. And so let's uh, open up our hearts to him. Just a few notices, because it wouldn't be Palm Sunday without notices. <laughs> today is our missions offering, and our missions offering, that means all offerings given today and then for the rest of the day online will go to the mission partner project that we uh, have this month, which is for Pastor Solomon and his work in Delhi. And so we're going to be watching a video a little bit later on, uh, just before the offering, with the details of how that uh, offering will be used. Today at 4 p.m., there is the uh, afternoon service, the s sort of more uh, uh, interactive um, time that's led by uh, the Wilson family, and that will be here at 4 p.m. If you're already part of that, you'll know about it. If you don't and you're interested, uh, then we can certainly give you more details if you let us know. Uh, what's that prayer meeting tonight uh, at 7.30? That is uh, a prayer meeting conducted on WhatsApp, so hopefully you're good at typing. Um, you can do the voice messages and all of that. But if you are part of that group, again, you'll know all about it. If you're not part of it, but, you've sound, but it sounds interesting and intriguing that you'd like to be part of that, then please do let me know and we can put you in the, point you in the right direction. Next Sunday, it's Easter Sunday. Uh, yeah, uh, and it's going to be an all-age service. So there's going to be no separate children's work, no separate youth work. We're all going to be together. Yeah, we like that. And uh, so that's going to be next week. But during the course of that offering, we're going to take up another special offering, which is for Ukraine and, uh, and for, the, uh, for the relief efforts and, uh, and all sorts of other uh, purposes in Ukraine. And so again, more details will be given next week. But just so you can be aware and prepared, there will be an offering for Ukraine during our all-age family service next week. On Thursday this week, the 14th of April, we have got our MCF family night. Um, and that will be here. That is on Maundy Thursday, and so we will also be having communion together on that evening. So please do uh, come, if at all possible. It's going to be great. Apparently the Queen gives money to people on Maundy Thursday, but I don't think we'll be giving money away. But, um, but we will have our all-age... It's not real money. Oh, it's not real money, that's right. Well, we can do that. We're having one of our CLCs. There's 101. Honoured by the Queen at Windsor Castle on Thursday. Oh, very good. Yes, it's a morning money. Oh, well, brilliant. <laughs> One of the CLC workers, 101 years old. Yes, Sandy Sanderson. 
Wow. I've been quite honoured and demanding money. Fantastic. Well, that's good news. Yep. So we will uh, uh, we'll thank God for that. There is a welcome pack. I went to get one to show you, and I can't find them. I think they've all been given away. But uh, there are some more. We've got some more. But you see there's an example of one stuck on the wall there. Those are welcome packs that are growing week by week as more leaflets go in. But it's like a one-stop shop for everything that goes on in MCF. It's not quite complete yet, but it's a great, uh, nicely presented gift that you can give to anybody that is new to the church or wants to know more about what goes on in the life of the church, the varied week that we have. And, uh, and one of those packs will contain as much information as we currently have available, and more will be added week by week. So uh, please do be aware, and we'll make sure that some of those are available uh, at the front. Easter devotions are online. Uh, the, um, they've been conducted, what's the word, done by different people from the church, uh, like, a bit like we did for the Christmas thing. They're going to last for two weeks, and they, they last about seven or eight minutes, and they're either on the Facebook platform, or they're on YouTube, or they can be accessed through the website. Um, and so please do go and see. There's a new one every day. They started this week already. I think we're on about number, is it four? Three or four? Yeah, three, uh, to, three today. So please do uh, connect to that, and, uh, and you, you definitely will enjoy and benefit from listening to those. The notices on the screen earlier on, if you were reading them, as I know you were, uh, said that there'll be a cafe this week, but there will not be a cafe this week. So... If you turn up, you might be disappointed, but uh, there won't be any cafe, but it is, is it, and is it next week as well, or are we starting again next week, Graham? Uh, it's, 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 oh. No cafe last week and this week. Starts, Starts again next Wednesday. No, All right, so, this Wednesday, not, Wednesday. yeah, not this Wednesday, but the following, <laughs> the following week, after Easter, that's it. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> Well, you can't get away from the fact that it is Palm Sunday, and so we have got a, another appearance of the Lego movie. Good Friday service. Okay, help me with that. <laughs> Who wrote my script? <laughs> Good Friday service. Here. 10.30. Well... I know everything. <laughs> 10.30, Good Friday, there will be a service here. And it will be streamed as well. So, uh, so no excuse. And uh, so that will be great. Yeah, so, so just uh, do my apologies for that. But uh, yeah, Good Friday service, 10.30 here on this coming Friday. Right. Lego Movie. city of Jerusalem was full of people. People were coming from near and far to the Passover. Jesus and his disciples were on their way too. Jesus said, Go into the village. Bring me the donkey that you find there. If anyone asks what you're doing, tell them that the master needs him. The disciples did as Jesus said. Uh, why do you need that donkey? It's for Jesus. Oh, okay then. Bye. They brought the donkey to Jesus. Jesus climbed on and rode the donkey towards the city. The crowd began to get excited and ran to see him. Long ago, a prophet said that God's promised king would come into Jerusalem, riding on a peaceful donkey. Jesus cheering and shouting, they waved tree branches and shouted, Hosanna! At last, God's promised king has come. As the crowd cheered, Jesus rode into the city. There we are. 
And is there another one next week? I think there might be. Oh, there'll be another one. A new, a new, a new release <laughs> next week for Easter Sunday. Great. Uh, it's our missions offering time. We're going to watch again the video uh, from Pastor Solomon, and then we'll take the offering. Dear MCF members, greetings in Jesus' name. You truly make incredible impact in the flag ministries. Rescue Home is the place where the story of every rescued child is unfolded from tragedy to joy. We are making it happen since nine years. Our highly potential rescue team involves the risky and dangerous mission to save the traffic child. Soon after the rescue, the child will need immediate emergency care. In coordination with the police and Children Welfare Committee, the child is boarded here. When the child reaches, they will be exhausted, traumatized and completely filled with grief. The flag team has made strong core values to light up their lives. This home can provide the girls respectful and dignified living. There are 45 individual beds provided with a well-furnished dormitory, 10 restrooms, kitchen with pantry, dining and utility area. There is 24 into 7 security. Whoever comes here are weak and fragile and so we feed them to grow and become strong. The image of each individual is being groomed by providing them with good clothing. The formal and informal education is an effort to provide transition. They achieve their independence for future living through tailoring, beautician and knitting classes imparted here. Beside their trauma and pain, they refresh their mind through music, dance, playing indoors. Through the counseling, their mental health is taken care and we provide psychological treatment. Our flag team has the ability to predict the criminal incidents which is vital for the investigation. This ability makes it possible for us to both protect potential victims and apprehend perpetrators. This led to the tracing of the families of these young lives whose lives were under peril. It is our calling to advocate to their rights and justice and we do that until it is achieved. The children who are from us set freely from their depression, pain and trauma with transformation. By your continuous support through prayer and finances in the last year, 204 children were rescued. 161 children were restored and 16 children were admitted in formal school education. The pandemic gave rise to closure of more than 900 churches in Delhi and hence we planted 40 new house churches in the nook and corner of the city. This year we are aiming to rescue 400 children and establish aftercare home for girls above 18 years of age. We can reach every milestone only through your generosity. We, the Flag family, is praying for you continuously. We are indebted to your kindness and love. Thank you to every MCF family from the bottom of our heart. Well, so there we are. So what an amazing work, rescuing uh, girls in that way. And so our offering this morning is going to be invested in that. Uh, ministry and in that work. So we're going to have the little video that shows you how you can give because you can give. We've got these, uh, the red bags will be passed around and so if you have cash that you would like to put in then you can, you can do that as they come around. There are also ways to give online um, and there are also ways to give by text message and so the video will explain all that and then the, uh, the worship team will lead us as we, as, we do, as we take up our offering and then the indicator will come up on the screen and the children and young people can go to their activities. Thank you.
I'm out of puff this morning. I feel like I want to stand on my chair. Just feel like I can't just contain who God is in the world that we're surrounded with. He's our refuge and our strength. He is our fortress. That's who God is. We're going to let the children go, but I just would ask if you, could you stand if you're able? If you're able. I'm going to take some time to worship God. And I picked an old one that I haven't heard for a very long time. It says, Jesus shall take the highest honor. The great song, Jesus shall take the highest praise. Whether we give it to him or whether we don't, takes it all. His praise belongs to him. Let all earth join heaven. The heavenly realms are exalting King Jesus. The Bible tells us that even the trees of the fields clap their hands. The name of which is above all other names. We have heard so many names promoted this last week over these last few weeks, all declaring who is higher than the other. Yet there's only one name. There's only one name that is above all other names. There's only one. The Bible tells us that he has dominion over all nations. There's only one name. Only one. Only one name. And his name is Jesus, who has dominion over all nations, over all peoples. And you and I have the privilege of knowing this name as our personal saviour. So privileged this morning to be able to stand in his presence. Jesus shall take the highest honour. Jesus, Jesus shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Let all earth join him in exalting the name which is above all other names. Let's bow the knee in humble. confess he is Christ God's only son sovereign Lord we give you glory now for all honor and blessing and power belongs to you Lord belongs to you all honor shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Let all earth join and in exalting the name which is above all other names. Let's bow the knee.
While we're worshipping, just carry on, musicians, carry on playing. If you just feel that you need someone to pray with you, just like you just to pop your hand up where you are. There's a situation or a circumstance. Pop your hand up, somebody around you. We'll just pray for you in that moment. They don't need to know all the details. We just pray the outpouring of the Holy Spirit over your life. There's somebody here with their hands up. Somebody could just lay hands. Anybody else? Somebody behind there? Don't be shy. If you see a hand, please make your way towards that person. Pray with them. The rest of us are going to worship. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? There's a hand back there. There's a hand back there. Anybody else? I believe the presence of God is here. I believe he's moving in power amongst us. There's a hand here. Just here. Can somebody go? Thank you, Fiona. That's great. Anybody else? I believe God is doing something in this place this morning. Anybody else need a touch of the, from the Holy Spirit this morning?
the sense the Lord wants to say. It's not about how well you do. It's not about how spectacularly you may have fallen or fell. Go <coughs> down. It's not to do whether you feel you're coping with uh, difficult situations and circumstances. But it's simply in Jesus. And my Holy Spirit comes to live within you. To bring the very presence of God. To bring that sense of, of the life of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in those situations where you feel without power, without hope, you feel uncertain of things, I am your rock, says the Lord. And I can do things that are far and above what you think or imagine. All I require of you is to open your hearts to me. Let me in. Let me in. For I will do a work within you. For my love and grace and mercy abound, abound with limitless measure to you, even right now. Therefore, do not look upon yourselves. Do not listen to the lies of the evil one, but look to Jesus and receive that life, hope, power and presence that only I can give you, says the Lord. Uh, sometimes I, I sort of feel or see something and I feel that God wants to say something. And early in the service I was sat there, there was a young lady, I don't know her name, little girl over here with a t-shirt on. And it says, I give myself permission to be fabulous. And I really feel that's the essence of what Roland's just brought. Yes, we can sometimes feel that we are lost, we are sinners, we are hopeless. But because of what Jesus did on his death and resurrection, we are fabulous. Because that's what he says about us. Amen. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed.
Amen. Please take your seats. I realise in the uh, relaying of notices and things like that, there may have been a little unclear on the family, ser- family meeting on Thursday. That is actually uh, not so much as a service, but it's a ca- coming together. We'll have the communion, as I said, but it's also a... Uh, it's like a bit of a, if I say business meeting, that might put you off, but it's like a, a review of where we have come from, where we're at and where we're going, um, financial updates, things like that, important stuff in the life of the church family, and uh, it will be great if uh, as many people as possible could be together for that. I don't know if it will be streamed or not, That will it, Pete? Or? Yeah, it will. It will be streamed. Okay. All right. And also, just to re-emphasize, check in my records, not this uh, unreliable piece of paper I've got here, but obviously uh, Good Friday service, 10.30. I think Steve's been working hard on putting that together. Is that right? And uh, so we will be here together uh, at 10.30 on Good Friday, and then the all-age service on Sunday for Easter Sunday. Great. More reflective service. More reflective service on what Jesus did and experienced and did for us. So, reflective, we will be sharing communion and worshipping as well as part of that. All right, great. Okay. Well, that gives a bit more insight into what will be there. So, uh, um, yeah, Good Friday, 10.30, right here. Roland is going to speak to us this morning. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it, Roland. <laughs> You knew, you knew who it was, didn't you? I did, I recognised the voice. <laughs> right, let's, let's pray for you. The spirit of encouragement. <laughs> oh. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it stands on its own, but we also thank you that by your grace, you, you give us, your servants, the opportunity to impart it. And I want to pray for Roland this morning, that you give him the power and the grace to impart what is on your heart for us this morning as he speaks your word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Good to see so many here. Uh, we're having a break from our series in Romans, and we're looking at this today. is, is Palm Sunday, so we're going to look as the Lego movie adequately explain what's happening, Um, we're going to look at Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. I'm going to read um, from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. And we read these words. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives... Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Whilst we're taking um, taking a break from our series in Romans, um, I think it's very fitting after what we've seen in those first seven chapters uh, of Romans that uh, we now come to uh, reflect on the ministry, life and ministry of Jesus. We've heard that um, 
Paul made the case very clearly that we have all sinned and we are cut off from God. We are excluded from that relationship with him. And we could do nothing about that ourselves but God. Isn't it wonderful? But God. But God sent his son Jesus. And Jesus did what we couldn't do. Jesus was the only one who could do what was needed to bring us, uh, to deal with our sin and to bring us back into that uh, relationship and fellowship with the Father. And this is what we see as we uh, kind of celebrate and, and recognize uh, Easter, as we come up to Easter. This, this is a, a, a foundational, f uh, fundamental a bedrock foundation in our Christian life and belief. It signifies the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem signifies the start of the last week of Jesus' earthly life with us. We're told in, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The reason why Jesus was born, and we covered this at Christmas time, was that he came as God's gift to bring God's salvation to us. His purpose of being born is to die on the cross and to be raised uh, on the third day. And uh, in Jesus' mind, <laughs> he's already determined, he's set his face to go into Jerusalem, knowing what's going to happen when he gets there. He's taken pains over uh, quite a long time to try to explain to his disciples, I'm going away but you won't be left alone, and all that kind of stuff. And Well, where are you going to? Can't we come with you? All these kinds of things, you know. And, and um, even now, Jesus entering Jerusalem, knowing what's going to happen, he's, he's still trying to encourage his disciples uh, in what's, what's going to take place and encourage them that, that you know, <laughs> they won't be left alone. Jesus is the Messiah. We all, each and every one of us, need a saviour. And that's Jesus. So, let's look at this passage. Uh, I think there's uh, three or four points quickly. First of all, the king is coming. The king is coming. It was true then. I think there is a sense that the kingdom, uh, sorry, the king is, is come amongst us even today. But there is also that future promise that he is going to return. It'll be a completely different uh, thing to this. But, but there is a sense that uh, Jesus is preparing himself um, to be revealed or to reveal himself as, as God, the king. So Jesus has set his face to Jerusalem, knowing what's going to happen. In the previous days to getting there, uh, Jesus, there are various accounts, in the various gospels, there are different accounts of things that take place. But Jesus heals two blind men at Jericho. He spends a day there at Jericho with a guy called Zacchaeus, who we've heard about. Jesus spent a day with his friends, uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And that a crowd had gathered uh, at that place uh, in Bethany to see Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, because Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And uh, the, the, uh, that word would have got round 
the, the crowds would have been interested to see who is this Jesus and who is this Zacchaeus. Wow, what a, what a story to tell. Sorry, Lazarus. And Lazarus, even Lazarus, what a story to tell, being raised from the dead. Also at that time, Jesus and the disciples had a meal at the home of Simon the leper. And on the same evening, Mary, a different Mary, anointed Jesus' feet with costly perfume. Again, indicating his death and burial, which was about to happen. So, from Bethany, Jesus approaches Jerusalem, and uh, that takes him to a village called Bethpage. The next stop would be Jerusalem itself. Jesus knew what was about to happen, and his, en his entry into Jerusalem must be done properly. So Jesus sends two of his disciples into the village on an important errand. So, second point is the, the king's preparation. Verse 2, uh, uh, Jesus says, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks or says anything to you, say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Just that expression, the Lord needs them. Jesus is the ruler of all, the master of all things, he, and he needs them. It was not a request. It was not a plea. It was a statement of fact that the owner, the Lord Jesus, needed them, and that the owner needed to submit to that request or to that instruction. I think likewise, uh, Jesus does not um, plead with us or request us or beg us to do things to obey him. It is that sense of, of an obligation out of God's amazing love and grace and mercy towards us that we obey him because of who he is and because of what he's done. We're simply told in, in verse 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. For the disciples, it was a clear instruction. And as we saw in uh, the video, uh, in the, yes, Lego movie, and also in uh, other gospel accounts, when they were asked, <laughs> what you're doing? They simply said uh, that the Lord had, has need of them. And I think this was, uh, Jesus was preparing ahead of what was going to happen. And, and the reason why he needed uh, the, the donkey and the foal uh, was simply, uh, simply explained in verse uh, 4. 4 and 5. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. And then it says, uh, from uh, Zechariah 9, verse 9, Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I think... Um, I think there are many, many, many prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. There are many prophecies about Jesus, what he would do, what he would, um, what he would bring about through his ministry. But this prophecy refers to Jesus as the Messiah, as the king that would come to bring salvation and to deliver the people from sin. Jesus would ride into Jerusalem in a very humble manner on a colt of a donkey. Now, this is very peculiar because ordinarily a conquering king or ruler would come riding 
a war horse. And he would come accompanied by an army, well equipped and, and with weapons. But Jesus comes in a very different way. Jesus comes as the, uh, sorry, in, uh, Jesus comes not in wealth, but in poverty. Not in grandeur, but modesty. Not as a judge, but as saviour. As the Passover lamb. It was the time of Passover. The crowds were gathering. Word was spreading. So what do we find? We find then the king's reception in verse 8 and 9. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and all those and those who followed shouted out their praise. When Jesus comes into Jerusalem riding on the donkey, the response is immediate. The crowds had already gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover. They saw that what the disciples were doing, putting their cloaks on the donkey and the foal for Jesus to ride on. And the crowd responded accordingly. Immediately, they were spreading cloaks on the floor and cutting down palm branches to spread on the road. And this was a sign of honour and respect. There was a sense that something quite special and unique was happening. There was the shouts of acclamation. There was the praise, the worship filled the air, and there was a big commotion. You couldn't avoid it or miss it. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I don't know. Perhaps if we were there, we'd start up with, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king of kings. Glory in the highest heaven, for Jesus the Messiah reigns. The other song, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, perhaps we might even sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna to the King of Kings. And that's who Jesus was. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He was coming and, and in his entry into Jerusalem, there was something of that that was displayed and made known. And what is, uh, what is great about this is, is that well, it's not so much great, but the reality is that this same crowd that did all that, that put their cloaks down on the road, that cut the palm branches down and laid them on the road, that were, sang, that they were singing or shouting these praises, five days later, six days later, would be crying for Jesus to be crucified. The crowd were very fickle. Isn't it interesting? Um, verse 10 and 11 says this, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. 
The city certainly must have been stirred by the procession that accompanied Jesus into Jerusalem. What an opportunity for those that knew something about Jesus to tell those who were asking who he was. There would be people who had followed him, the people from uh, the area that Jesus had ministered in, probably people uh, that he prayed for, had been healed, or had been touched by the, the teaching of Jesus and, and were followers of Jesus in that respect. Isn't it interesting that when asked, who is this, or who is this king, the reply was simply, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Yet instead of boldly proclaiming, Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah, the promised one, it was just simply a prophet from Nazareth. Jesus was a prophet, but he was so much more than that. And they failed to recognize it. Even those who had been with him had failed, in a sense, to declare that. that, that there is a sense that then the king was with them. The prophecies were fulfilled. The Messiah had come. And they'd even shouted that out themselves. They still failed to discern who he really was. And I, I have a feeling there's not much difference today, actually. People say all sorts of things about Jesus, true things, but they do not really believe in him. Some call Jesus a great teacher or a philosopher, yet they do not study what he taught nor follow his teachings. He was a great example, but they do not follow him. And I guess for us today, it's a warning. Don't be like the fickle crowd that surrounded Jesus that day, proclaiming one thing, but not acting in accordance with what they knew about him and what he'd done. If you know Jesus, then we can boldly proclaim who he is. And what's he done in our lives? This is our testimony. This is our story. Nobody can contradict you. It's your story. It's what you have known. And you can have confidence that when you do that, you are proclaiming God's love, grace, mercy, and salvation. If you don't know, if you don't know, if you're not sure about who Jesus is, then it's good that you recognize that, but it's also good that you find out who he is. And uh, maybe you can speak to people that you know, or if you want to, uh, on our website, you can contact us and we'll be, we'd love to share uh, some information and uh, talk to you and to help you. We're here to help you understand the truth about this Jesus. And we're here to help you to understand and to know that truth that of God's word applied in our lives today. You know, I, I find it absolutely amazing that uh, Jesus knew all that was going to happen to him. And yet he just accepted it gladly accepted it as the will of the Father. We are the direct beneficiaries of that. We stand in the goodness of that. Um, and, and the least we can do, I believe, in our hearts and in our lives is to acknowledge him as 
the Messiah, the King who is coming back one day. This is Jesus, our Savior. And he's worthy of all the praise and all the honor. And let's do that. Let's give him that now. Amen. Thank you, Roland. So, um, like I said earlier, so many familiar passages. And the whole, you know, the church calendar takes us through these times where we reflect on particular events whether it be Christmas or Easter or other times, and we can become so used to it, and yet we just need the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God, to bring these things to life into three-dimensional reality, because the coming of Jesus is so relevant uh, to the world that we live in, so relevant to our individual lives, that we're not just observing calendar dates, we're not just observing ritual or anything else, but we're actually meeting the King for ourselves. And as we respond and as we pray, I read this morning, just this morning, a prayer um, that Pete Gregg from the 24-7 prayer has, uh, has written. And it's an interesting one, really brings uh, something to life. It says this, it's called a street prayer for Palm Sunday. Gentle Jesus, find us today in the welcoming committee. No stretch limo, just a scratty borrowed donkey. Celebrating the astonishing humility of divinity anticipating the ultimate victory of the greatest victim. Man of the people, champion of the underdog, subverter of Caesar's twisted systems, you appear to be the God who comes to us veiled in the mundane, disguised as our own little lives. Come today to Borodjanka, to Donetsk, to Mariupol, to Kiev. Gentle Jesus, King of Kings, we need another way. There is static in the air. The strangest sense that these streets, these schools and houses will somehow soon erupt if we won't cry, Hosanna. And I think there's a real sense in which we need to be aware. We are aware, I know we are aware, but to remind ourselves of the times that we live in. Because when we listen, we hear the wars and rumors of war, and we see the things on our television screens, and we see the suffering and pain that there is in Ukraine and in so many other places. And we can just wish that it wasn't so. And we wish that things would, would be more peaceful. And we wish that though we would go back to before these things happened. And, and yet Jesus said, when he talked about wars and rumors of war, he said, these are, these are birth pains. These are signs of the end of the age. This is not the end. And sometimes we can fear that. We can feel, oh, you know, what will happen? How will this all pan out? And yet, you know, in actual fact, these are birth pains. And it may be that, you know, in all the... The, 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 the suffering and pain and everything else, it will subside. Maybe there'll be, uh, there'll be a periods of peace. There'll be other times, other things that we go through. But ultimately, we are in a momentum. We are moving towards the end of all things. And uh, we as the church have to be aware. We have, to ro- we have to rise up in our faith and in the way that we meet these things and in our expectation and in our knowledge that the King has come riding a donkey. He has come to us in our own little lives. He does come to us in these days that in the, the streets of Ukraine this morning, that he is there yeah. in, the, in the mundane and in the ordinary and in the pain and in the suffering and in the unimaginable grief that the king has come. And I think, they're, they're, like he said, there's static in the air. There's a sense that we can't just go on the same. We can't just wish for peace. We can't just wish that life wasn't as it is, but we know that we are part of a, of, a, of a movement that is gaining momentum towards the end of all things and the coming of the King, the ultimate coming of the King and the establishment of the Kingdom of God. And that's, the, that's what we're in. And so as we pray this morning, let's have that in mind, not just praying uh, you know, sim- simple prayers, but pray in the sense that we are part of something that is so big and so momentous and so important that uh, we must, as the church, meet it with faith and, uh, and confidence and confidence in the power of God. I was given also, as we come to pray, we will pray for Ukraine and other areas of the world in the bigger picture, but uh, Phil gave me a note this morning, Phil France, um, about the, the drop-in 
And I'll read it to you. It says, last Monday, Chris, the biker, who comes to Thursday night drop-in, was found dead. He was 44. He had died from either an asthma attack or a heart attack or both. It says, pray for John the biker that he will know God's peace because they've been best friends for 18 years and we are all gutted about it. And so we're going to pray for Phil, for the team, for all the friends and people connected uh, to the drop-in. And just remember again, as we pray, that is, a, that is absolutely frontline yeah. ministry. And they need the grace. This is the reality of the world we live in, that you know, we're reaching out to people, connecting with people, encouraging people, sharing faith with people. And then, on a Monday, 44 years old, he's found dead. And, uh, you know, this is the, the reality of it. So there's grief, there's pain, there's all the things that come with that. But there's also the knowledge of the, of the nature of the work that we're in and the word of life that we are holding out to people. Yeah. And we continue to pray for John, the biker, and all the other friends and people connected and Phil and the whole team that are involved in the drop-in there as well. We've had a request from Andy Pinder who just uh, said, could you please pray for me? Ter he's in terrific pain this morning, and so we're going to pray for him. And, uh, and Fiona in South Africa uh, has been sent messages. She's uh, getting involved in more and more things, with busy new initiatives that she's doing, and has asked for prayer as well. I'm sure there are many, many other things. And not, nothing much, as far as I can see, has come up on the, on the online forum, but uh, you will have things in your heart, uh, that as we begin to pray, lift them up to God as well. And um, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just do that. Let's turn our hearts to Him. Father God, we thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the way that You've brought it to us this morning. It's a reminder of the reality of what it means to have God come to us. Not in the way we would expect, not in the normal uh, splendor and glory, but seated on a donkey, in humility, in kindness, in compassion, in mercy. And Lord God, when we think of all the situations that come into our minds when we come to pray, it's those things that we need above all things. We hear more and more horror from Ukraine of all that evil can do. We pray that your mercy and your compassion and your kindness and your love would win over. That you are the King of kings. That nobody would think a King of kings and a Lord of lords would win anything seated on a donkey. But that's how you come. That's how you come, victorious King. That's how you come, submitted to the cross, submitted to evil, submitted to disaster, and yet through it all, life. And we pray for life this morning in Ukraine. We thank you, God, that uh, we thank you with trepidation that we know that all these things are birth pains of the end. These are signs of the end, and we want to be people that rise up and are ready, that, Father God, I pray you would strengthen our faith, you would strengthen our resolve, strengthen our confidence, so that when we see the news and when we hear the stories, our hearts don't fail within us, but we rise up with confidence that our King has come. And our King will come. Lord God, we know that you will have the final say. We know that you will, you will reign victorious over all evil. And so we pray today. God, we pray for your people in Ukraine. We pray for the people of Ukraine. That they would know every hot spot in this world that is suffering under the oppressor's boot. Lord God, we thank you that this King coming on a donkey has overcome them all. That he has won the victory and that they will not prevail, and they will not last, and they will not have the victory, but the kingdom will come, and will be established on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for all that you're doing in this world, Lord God, and I pray that we, as your church, would be intercessors, that would stand in the gap, that would stand with faith, that would stand with strength and encouragement, Lord God, that we might lift our heads together and look towards look to the vision that you give us in our hearts. We thank you. Lord, we pray closer to home for this situation in the drop-in. Lord God, what a tragedy to read of and, to, and, 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 and to, to think about. 
Lord God, we don't understand why things happen. We don't understand it, but we know that they do. And so we pray for great grace and comfort and compassion for the team, for Phil and for everybody that's involved, for, for John, Chris's friend. Lord God, we thank you that Chris has been coming. We thank you that he's been connected. We thank you for the ministry of that drop-in. We thank you that he has received words of life, words of faith. And we trust you for him, Lord God. And we pray for more grace and more power for the ministry of that drop-in and for the, for the way that they reach out and the way they connect to people. Lord God, I pray that that would be a, 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 an increasing and multiplying source of life to so many people. We thank you for that, that, that you come riding on a donkey in the form of that ministry. Lord God, you come to people's lives and we thank you. And in their grief, we pray compassion. In their grief, we pray comfort and we pray strength and we pray faith in Jesus' name. We pray for Andy as well, Lord God, as he's suffering this pain. Lord God, we pray for immediate relief. And for healing, we pray for him, Lord God. Thank you for the heart that reaches out. So often we just think, oh no, we don't want to mention it. We don't want to trouble whatever. But rescue comes when we ask for help. And I pray for him as he asks for help that you will meet him and you will touch him and you will heal him in Jesus' name. We pray for Fiona this morning and just ask God. That in, as she's, she's out there. She'll be feeling all the things that she does about, you know, uh, uncertainty and insecurity and loneliness at times, but yet thank you for the confidence of the call upon her life. And we pray, God, that you give her the strength and the resources and the grace that she needs to do all that you've called her to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. Are you ready? Good. Always ready. I love this hymn. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to gain. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and bad.
That's the word for us today. Oh, the night has, has been, been won, won. Yes. and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Oh, the night has been won. Hallelujah. Take that with you. And I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. So thankful for Jesus and all that he means and all that he continues to mean. And the victory that he promises us. We're not hoping for the best. The night has been won. Yes. And I shall overcome. What will happen? You know, we don't know what's going to wake up every morning, read the news. What's going to happen? What's happened overnight? What's going to happen next? The night has been won. And I shall overcome. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. God bless you. And uh, look forward. We've got a busy week ahead. So we'll see you family night, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday next week. Amen. Amen. Thank you.